This demonstration video is of the King Laser System. I believe this one's 130 watts. And we're just going to do an overview of the machine itself. Uh, another segment will have the accessories and um, cleaning supplies, etc. that are included with the machine. But first of all, let's go over the machine itself. And we'll, then we'll go over the buttons and the switches and whatnot, what they all do. Okay, this particular machine is a 3 foot by 4 foot model. Let's lift up the lid here. This is a uh, rather large table. You can see that there's a uh, slats. I believe there's 25 slats total. Each one of these are individually removable so that you can take them out as needed. Let's say you want to take out the center two and put your material across those two so that when it cuts, it's not getting any reflective point because the center uh, where your material is laying on is there's nothing underneath it. Unlike a honeycomb, they can really damage the bottom of material, particularly acrylic. That's not a problem with these slats. Okay. We have keys right here. Turn these keys, and we have a full pass-through. This entire front panel is removable, giving you full access, four foot wide, 21 half inches deep, to be able to cut uh, very, get very big items in here and cut long items as well. The rear panel is also removable. So same setup, it's two keys, uh, remove those in the back, and you have the full pass-through of four foot wide by any length up to 21 and a half inches deep uh, material. So you can get some rather big items in our machine. Uh, I believe we're the deepest table in the industry and we got the largest pass-through in the industry. The other thing that we like to touch on is that the, uh, let me put this cover back on. Okay, we replaced the door front panel on the machine. Um, it's easily removable. There's two keys on both sides. It comes on and off very simply. The back as well, so you can have full pass-through when you need it and close it up when you don't need it. Now, I'm going to fire up the machine. I have turned off the exhaust blower so we're not distracted by the noise of the blower, but I am going to go over the details of the machine itself. Okay, I'm going to turn on the machine. Right now, the way I usually do it, and I teach customers how, is this emergency button turns off all power to the machine. When that's unlocked, now the electrical current's allowed to pass through the system. Let's turn on this master power key. That activates everything that's plugged into the machine, which I'll show a little bit later. In the back of the laser, there are four 220-volt ports to plug in your compressor, your blower, your chiller, and a spare one to plug in anything else you might need. Now that's only power when the laser's powered on, of course. Okay, so that master power key activates the laser uh, power, uh, the electrical current to the entire laser machine. When we hit this driving power, that turns on the control panel, main board, all the accessories on the machine itself to allow it to turn on. So with that said, each one of these switches do have a specific function. Right now, what I don't have the laser two power turned on, the laser power button, simply because I'm not ready to activate that yet. Once that's turned on, then the beam will be allowed to uh, be created with electrical current through it. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to show off each one of these switches um, to explain what they mean. Okay, let's go over the buttons and switches on the machine itself. I've already shown you the uh, drive, the master power key and the driving power key. Master power gives power to the entire system including any accessories plugged into the back. The driving power gives control or electrical current to the control panel and the main board so that the machine can actually function. Let's activate the laser power. That's going to give electrical current to the laser tube allowing for the tube to actually fire when it allow it to actually create a laser beam so it can actually fire. Okay, what manual auto referred to when it's depressed, it's in, autom it's in automatic mode, which means it's using the software power speed, etc. settings. When it's in manual mode, it's going to use the settings you have on your control panel. So you can use either one that best fits your particular application. Uh, most people typically use the, manual, the auto setting because software is much faster to adjust power and speed settings. Last thing is lighting. If you look at the machine right now, no lights are on. That lighting button, we activate that button. A lighting system, LED lighting system is turned on. That is, this gantry right here is the X gantry. This X axis is what travels left to right above your material as you're cutting or engraving a particular project. And our LED light system is mounted directly underneath that so the area light lit up is always your material. And you can turn that on and off as needed. Most people never turn it off because it's easy to see. Uh, they like to see what the, um, the project looks like as it's being engraved. Other machines on the market that do have lighting, they make the mistake of putting the lighting in the very back of the machine or the very front of the machine. The problem with that is there is most people will work in the center of the table and that light does not work well especially on a big table such as this 3 by 4 foot 
uh, it lights up in the center area, but on the front and back would never light up where you're actually working. So we overcame that uh, limitation by putting our LED lighting right on the axis itself. Okay, now, um, so that explains what those switches, buttons, and uh, etc. do. Let's come up to the control panel itself, and this is very important. Right now, the head is in the center of the table, okay? What this datum button does, it's going to send, when I press it, it sends the lens assembly to the home position. That's just telling the machine its starting point, the farthest point it can go before it actually uh, processes a job. Okay, what we're going to do as well is when I hit this escape, right now the uh, file that we send down XM8 laser is what's highlighted. Once I press the escape button, this button right here, that highlight is now no longer highlighted. We can now use these arrows to, to move the lens assembly. So I'm going to move the head back to the center of the table and set a home position there. Okay, so set anywhere on the table you want. Pressing the enter key three times makes that the new home position. Okay, okay, what I'm going to do is push a piece of material on the table. Okay, just randomly stick it anywhere. It really doesn't matter where it goes. Uh, the whole point is I want to press this test button to show where the job, the test button does an outline of the object being grayed, regardless of how big or small it is, as long as it fits within the parameters of the table itself then the lens assembly will do an outline showing us where it's going to engrave and or cut that design. So that means I can move this around so I can maximize my material, run that test again, and it shows me I'm pretty close to running it right where I maximize my material. Now I don't have to discard material the way you used to have to do it in these machines. Okay, now coming back here, and of course it's using the center home where I started at is a center position on the design itself so when I press start or excuse me test it's going to start from that position go up to the farthest left top left of where it believes it needs to start does the outline of our test to show us if we're going to fit on the material now when I press this other button the laser button that manually fires the beam okay actually before I can fire and manually fire the beam because I have the lid open Okay, the lid's completely open. That means this safety switch is not depressed. This key right here allows us to unlock this circuit switch so that now when we press the test button, the beam will fire, as you can see there, overriding that safety circuit. And this is a done with a key so that uh, as the owner, as the operator, you can take that key out and as long as that key is not in there you cannot override that system so the whole idea is to allow uh, some safety mechanisms so you can run the machine as a class 4 which would be with the lid open or as a class 3 with the lid closed either way you know what you're doing because you consciously have to make these changes uh, laser switch means that's not depressed the way I just unlocked it myself you can hear the beam you can hear me firing the tube manually but the beam won't fire when I push that laser switch back in now you can see the beam. Okay, so you can override that as well. You can tell the machine not to to not to ever let that beam fire or to let it fire. Infrared switch, what that refers to is the red dot, the red diode. You can turn that on and off at, at will. And the reason why you'd want to be able to turn that off is when you're doing a uh, optics cleaning of the lens. You definitely don't want that red dot shooting into your eyes. It could damage your eyes. It could cause a problem. So we set up a switch here so you can turn it off so you can clean your optics in, 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 with safety. Okay? So let's go back here to the other settings here. And it's a little difficult to see, but you can see the file name, which is XMA Lasers. You can see the uh, speed that's being sent over, the power, and how many times you're going to run the piece, etc. What we're going to do here is we're going to press Start. And what that's going to do is going to start the job itself. Okay? So we're just engraving the XM8 Lasers logo that's been in the system already that we did earlier. And right now I don't have my exhaust blower on so that it's not um, too loud and I can discuss the uh, details of the machine and allow you to see what's going on without, uh, and allow you to hear me as well. Uh, normally when the exhaust blower is on, all this smoke that you're seeing in the screen is pulled out of the machine in the back here. There's the uh, exhaust manifold, and it's sucked out, it's sent outdoors. Okay, once it finishes that area, what's going to happen with that engraving section is going to start cutting out.
Okay, so now it's cutting out each individual object of the logo itself. Always starts in the center and works its way out, which is ideal because you don't want to start on the inside or the outside and it drops out of focus and then it goes back to do the inside. It's not a good idea. Okay, now it's doing the outside of the logo, the XMA logo, XMA lasers logo. Once it completes that, we can pull that piece out of there and it will be ready for handing out to the next prospective customer. Just about that. The whole job takes about a minute or so. This is a four inch logo. Okay. And done. And once we pull that out of the way, you can see that the logo now is completed and done. Okay? So the way this system works is you send over the job from the software, you position your head where you want it to, um, moving the hitting escape key, and which unlocks the screen right there. Okay, once that screen's unlocked, press these arrows, move the head where you want it to. If that's a new home position you want it to be, press enter three times, once, twice, three times, that becomes a new home. Now when I press test, the beam, the lens assembly is going to show us an outline of the object that we're going to engrave. If it's positioned where you want it to be, then you just press the start button to proceed with the job. Okay? And if you're not happy with the job, you can just stop it. What I prefer to do is pause it, have a look at your job itself, the material, make sure everything's running fine. If it's going the way you want it to, just press start again, and because start becomes pause, pause becomes start. Press that again, the job continues. If you don't want to run the job, hit stop, and it goes back to its home position, ready to process the next job. So the, the switches are pretty self-explanatory, um, and of course this video clarifies it quite a bit. You have the datum button, which sends it home. You have the laser button, which laser manually fires a laser beam. You have the stop, so when a job is running, you actually will stop the job. You have a test button, which does an outline of your object so that you can visually see where it's going to uh, engrave or cut your, your um, design. Your start becomes pause once it's running. If you pause it, then it becomes start. Escape allows you to unlock this screen because normally what happens is when you're pressing these arrows, you're cycling through individual selections within the menu system. Once you press the escape button, that becomes, un the highlight is no longer in that control panel, so these arrows allow you to move the head where you want it to, okay? Assuming you want to adjust your Z vo your focus, which means your, your focal distance, what that does is that allows you to drop those two dots down or raise them up so that two dots become one, you're focused. Once you're in focus, Press the Z again, releases the Z focus menu, and you're ready to start engraving. Okay? Um, again, the switches, this switch, this key right here is a protection key to allow you to, to run the machine with the lid open. And whoever has this key, they're the only ones that are going to be allowed to or able to run the machine with the lid open. Laser switch is, switch is another safety mechanism. If that's not depressed, that beam will not fire no matter what you do. Uh, infrared switch allows you to turn off the red diode so that you can safely clean the system without uh, putting that red diode into your eyes. The um, lighting cyst buttons turn the lights inside the machine on and off. Auto manual. Auto means you're going to use the software settings, which is the 99% of the time is what you're going to use. But you will use manual if you ever have to do a beam alignment um, because you want to manually set your power down to maybe 5% power, 6% power. Very low, just enough to do a dot to be able to do your beam alignment. But the majority of the time, like 99% of it, you're going to use auto and use your settings from the software. Uh, laser power, without this turned on, there is no electrical current to your laser tube, so it won't fire. This allows you to turn the tube um, power on or off. This driving power turns on electrical current to your main board, motors, control panel, etc. Without that turned on, nothing runs on this machine as well. And of course, the main key, which is the driving key, the driving po master power, this is what turns, um, allows electrical current to the entire machine, including any accessories plugged into the back of the machine. The last button I want to show off, or the last things I want to show, are there's a couple of uh, USB ports here. Uh, one, the top one, 
is what's connected to your computer. So when you send a job over to the machine, that USB connection is a dyna or live uh, signal, meaning it will show you the contents of the control panel on your computer screen so you can manually delete individual files or all of them in one shot. The one on the bottom, the thumb drive, what that's referring to is you can assign or you can create a design in the designing software, in the, in the XMA Draw software, and download it to a thumb drive and let's say you want to put a dozen files on that thumb drive now you don't even need a computer connected to the laser machine because you can plug in that thumb drive directly to this port and the laser machine will automatically sense it's on there and it'll upload either one file or all files in your choice and which one you want to do and then you can start running those jobs as is so it's an ideal uh, function for people that have uh, computer design systems uh, up on the second floor and the machine laser machine down on the first floor so that you don't have to run a network you don't have to run a um, you know sneaker net up and down to do things uh, rotary attachment what that does what that rotary switch is for is to turn on the rotary attachment motor and turn off the X, the Y motor on the laser machine so the Y motor moves the front to back that turns off the motor on the rotary attachment turns on allowing you to do round objects so it's very straightforward, very simple. Um, a quick access door to the components within the laser. Let's turn this key, open that up. And you can see it's kind of dark in there right now. But the main board, the power supply, the, um, the drivers that control the motors themselves, the sensors, the power block, the uh, power supply for the laser tube itself. All the components that make this machine possible are easily accessible in this behind this doorway. So it's very easy for the end user to, to get in here, uh, take off a couple of plugs, swap out a part if necessary, and very easily accessible.